So since doing my review of this Armitan tadpole frame, I've had quite a few requests to do a build of this, and that's what we're going to do today. So let me get the top plate off of this, and then I'll go ahead and discuss with you what the plan is for parts for this, and then we'll get the build started. So in case you aren't familiar with it, the Armitan tadpole is a 2.5 inch lightweight frame uh, designed to have the capability to mount 16 by 16 stacks as well as one inch whoop style boards with this adapter. Now this adapter came with my frame but I don't actually think I'm going to use it. And let me tell you why. So the board this is the, the stack I'm going to be using. It actually comes out of a different quad that I'm not going to be flying anymore. But the board comes with these two holes here for the whoop board mounting. And if I put this in here, then you, you can see that the motor connections work just fine. However, and the USB port sticks out of the bottom here a little bit. However, if I put the adapter in here, then I can no longer use the motor connections on the bottom like they are normally designed to. Now, you can flip the board over, of course, and that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do, um, but I've already got this all soldered up and I don't really feel like doing that. And you know, you just change things in, in Betaflight and reassign the motors. It's not that hard to do, but I think I'm just going to do mine this way with it mounted like this. So in that, for that concept, what I've done is I have made a little 3D printed pad that's going to go right here in the middle. And that's going to support the bottom of the flight controller so that I'm not just mounting it and just in these two holes and having it kind of weeble wobble back and forth. I also 3D printed this little, I'm not really sure what to call it, but it's a little mount for the VTX. This is just a happy model VTX. It's not my favorite VTX, but once again, this is what's already wired up. So for now, it's what I'm going to run. I can't guarantee I'm going to run it forever. And then I'll run this, this or a similar antenna out the back. So... This obviously is not going to be the recommended way to do this, but I want to do it because I just want to try it out and see if you can get away without using this additional mount and not have to flip this board over in order to use the motor connectors that are designed into it. Now, of course, if you use a toothpick style board, you can forego doing all of that because everything will be mounted on the top and the side and this will work just all right, I went in and got the flight controller mounted up. I also installed a set of these Beta FPV 1103-8000 kV motors. I wouldn't necessarily recommend installing the flight controller right side up like this. Uh, problem one, you've got the USB port hanging out of the bottom a little ways. Problem two, your motor wires are sticking down a little bit as well. Problem three, you need to make a custom pad to go between the flight controller and the frame because otherwise this will wobble all around. Now I did those things and it's pretty good. I put these foam pads in the bottom just so it wouldn't be sitting on the motor wires when it's sitting down getting ready to be launched. But it's definitely not the right way to do this. You need to, if you have a whoop style board, you need to flip it over and mount it that way. I want to do it this way because this was already set up this way from another quad that I had and it was just easy to do it this way. I probably won't stick with this setup, but we'll just see how it goes for now. I also mounted up my Runcam Nano 2 on here and I have an XM Plus that's in here and I will go ahead and get that mounted on the bottom of the top plate and we'll get the top plate put on and you know get some props put on it and then we'll see how this looks. Alright guys, well here's the configuration I ended up settling on. I've got these new HQ prop 65 millimeter by three propellers and they're really low pitched but they seem to work pretty well for this quad. I also ended up putting a lollipop antenna on here. It's a little bit big but it does work fairly well. I tried several different props. I tried uh, these props here. I put some vibe blades on it and these props worked pretty well. I can't remember what these are. They come stock on the Tiny Hawk Freestyle. And they worked pretty well. Uh, I like these a little bit better. Uh, these actually may fly a tiny bit better, but these are quieter and I normally fly around in my neighborhood, so that works best for me. I ended up running my power lead up here, up the side, and being secured by the battery strap. That worked pretty well for me. So let's take a look at some flight footage now.
as far as doing this where I put the all-in-one right side up, didn't flip it over, and then put that pad in the middle, yes, it did work, but I really don't recommend it. it it's kind of a pain. It exposes the motor wires down here to getting hit in a crash or a landing. That's why I have these pads down here, and it's not really worth it. I was a little bit hesitant to flip it over because I'd already had everything wired up here with the VTX and all that, but honestly, I since I built a 1S toothpick with the baby tooth frame and I flipped over the all-in-one on that, it wasn't really that big of a deal and I really should have just done that on this. So if you're going to build one of these, don't do it like I did. Just go ahead and flip it over like it's supposed to be and, and it'll work out just fine. Other than that, I really like the frame. I think it's a, a great frame. It's nice and stiff. It's reasonably light and it looks great and protects every, everything inside really well. I hope you guys have a good day and we'll talk to you soon.